Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to load plugins in dual mono so that you can separate the left and right channels. And this also has some uses for mid-side processing as well. I typically will use this when I need to use Logic's stock compressor. Um, because it doesn't have a feature where you can sort of separate the compression or independently control the compression of the left and right channels uh, just natively built into it. So before I show you how to do this, let me kind of just set up some context here. So if you're applying bus compression to a track, um, in particular, one bus compressor I love using uh, is the API 2500 from uh, Universal Audio. It's one of their UAD plugins. And what's very common on bus compressors is to see a link knob or a link button or switch. Now, when the link is all the way over to 100%, that means that the left and right channels are linked. The amount of compression that is applied and the, the setting that's applied is the same. So even if there's like a, a hard transient in one of the far sides of the mix, the other channel is going to be compressed as well at the same amount. And sometimes that's that might be what you want, and other times it, it may not be what you want. And so when you pull down the left-right link, when you get down to uh, IND, which is independent, that means that essentially the left and right channels are acting like their own compressors, but they're just using the same settings. So something that's in you know the right channel is only going to be compressed as in the right channel. Something that's only in the left channel is only going to be compressed in the left channel. And so that's sort of the context here and why you would want to do this if you're uh, using stock plugins. So let's pull up the compressor here and I've got the vintage VCA on my drum bus and I'm just gonna play a little bit here there's a, a fill that uses all three toms. So you can see there that essentially that all of the toms are being compressed at the same amount, both left and right channel toms. The way this kit is mixed, the high tom, tom one is more over to the left, the floor tom's over on the right, and the second tom is slightly over to the right. So the way you can do this is you just load up your plugin. It doesn't have to be the compressor. It can be just about any plugin. Uh, just about any plugin can be loaded in dual mono, including third-party plugins. So you're gonna load it up in dual mono. It's going to keep all of its same settings, but what you're gonna see up at the top here now is a left and right channel control. If I change what's going on in one channel, like on the left channel, if I pull up the ratio a bit, then switch over to the right channel, you're gonna see that the value isn't carried over. However, if you click this couple button, you can move that parameter around and you'll see it does the same for the left channel. If I move the left channel parameter around, it does the same on the right channel. And so that can couple your controls so that you can still maintain the same setting and adjust both channels at the same time. But because the left and right channels are separated now, each channel is going to be compressed differently um, because they have different information coming into them, right? The We're gonna hear more of the first tom in the left channel and we're gonna hear more of the second and third tom in the right channel. You know, if there's a cymbal crash on the right, that's gonna be compressed only in the right. Whereas if there's a cymbal crash in the left, that's only going to be compressed in the left rather than everything uh, being compressed at the same time. So just uh, to kind of give you, you know, uh, an example here, I'll play that same fill. We'll view it on just the left channel first, and then we'll view it on the right channel separately. And you'll see those different amounts and the different timing of the compression that's applied. Also note that now your input gain and output gain are both mono meters rather than stereo meters. So here's just the left channel for that drum fill. See how much compression is being applied on that first tom, but not so much to the second and third toms? Let's go over to the right channel, and now you're going to see the exact opposite. More compression on the second and third tom, less compression on the first tom. Now,
Now, this is a technique that I didn't cover in my mixing course, but I wanted to make a quick video just to point it out because it is kind of an important thing. And I find it really helpful for bus compression where you have like a stereo source and the left and right channel information is not the same. You know, if you're using like two mics, like in an XY, you know, miking uh, position, like you're going to get a very similar content on the left and right side of that recording. But with a drum kit, we've got toms and hi-hats and cymbals that are on completely opposite ends of the kit. And we're using a spaced pair in this example. So there's going to be a lot of left and right variation. And this is a way to maybe maintain some of the dynamics of each channel individually and maybe get a better uh, balance overall when applying bus compression. Now, dual mono processing opens the door for a lot of things, because if you click here, this will take you over to a section where you can bypass the left and right channels separately. Um, you can also switch from stereo to mid side. And so now you've got a mid side compressor with one uh, channel compressing the center of the mix and then another compressor compressing the sides of, of that mix. You know, while I'm not going to go uh, deep into mid-side processing here, it can also be used for mid-side processing. Mid-side processing, I find it maybe a little bit more useful when you're EQing individual channels, or maybe you want the center of a recording to have maybe a little more bass, a little more punch, a little more fullness, but then the side information, maybe you want a little more top end and a little bit less bass. And so you can use it... Um, uh, for, you know, mid-side EQ. But like I said, virtually every plugin in Logic can be loaded up in dual mono mode. So again, that's a topic I didn't cover in my main Mixing Fundamentals course. If you want to check that out, it's on my YouTube uh, channel right now. I'm uploading uh, the videos uh, Monday through Friday, one video per day. But if you want to get early access to my full mixing course or you want to check out some of my other Logic Pro courses, you can head over to my website, logicproguide.com. It really helps out the channel. And, and honestly, it's the most direct way to support the channel and, uh, you know, keep this train rolling. OK, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, Thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.